Hello friends, welcome back to Online Law and this is a YouTube channel dedicated for medical students and for those students who would like to appear for USMLE, Step 1, Step 2 CK and Step 3 examination. So this is a medical video lecture, Microbiology. And today's topic of discussion is two important bacteria from Vibrio species, that is Vibrio parahemolyticus. Parahemolyticus, okay, and Vibrio volnificus. Volnificus. Guys, uh, here I'm going to talk about these two bacteria related to USMLE step 1 examination. So I'm not going to go in detail, okay? So just try to concentrate and what are the catching points about this, I would like to tell you. So let's start about this Vibrio parahemolyticus and Vibrio volnificus, VV and VB. Before starting a discussion, let me ask you the basic questions about the Vibrio. Tell me whether it's a gram positive or a gram negative bacteria. It's a gram negative. Good, excellent. And it is a rod or a bacilli? It's a rod. Okay. And it has a polar flagella, remember. And the other important points are their oxidase positive. Oxidase positive. Vibrios are oxidase positive. Okay. And they grow very well on alkaline media alkaline media okay and what's the medium that is used for their growth tcbs theosulfate citrate bile salt and sucrose okay right now let's start so for usml examination the important thing here you need to remember because the signs and symptoms of the presenting bacteria will be same similar almost all time but remember the reservoir and the transmission remember the most important thing is reservoir if you see the reservoir in the USMLE step examination then you can identify the bacteria that is causing the problem for his disease okay so Vibrio parahemolyticus is a marine life remember marine life okay and how it is transmitted? It transmitted by consumption of uncooked or raw seafood. Seafood. Okay. Whereas Vibrio volnificus, if in US assembly the mention of brackish water, or oysters then think that it is a Vibrio volnificus okay and how it is caused similar thing consumption of undercooked or raw seafood or swimming in a brackish water or shucking oysters okay this can cause Vibrio volnificus so the parahemolyticus causes gastroenteritis causes GE gastroenteritis and how the patient will present patient presents in the watery diarrhea with cramping abdominal pain so how would you like to treat them self-limiting no need to give any antibiotics or nothing it subsides on its own whereas volnificus will have two presentation one it can present with the gastroenteritis GE or if it's due to swimming then it can present with cellulitis CE or sometimes it can present with the septicemia also. If gastroenteritis, then it presents with the same that is a watery diarrhea with cramping and abdominal pain. Whereas treatment will be the same, self-limiting. Okay, but if it's cellulitis, then what do you have to do? It's really very important to treat because it's really rapidly spreading. Okay, so what's the treatment? Treatment is tetracycline or a third generation cephalosporins. Or third generation cephalosporins 
okay guys so these are the important points about uh, vibrio parahemolyticus and vibrio volificus thank you so much for watching this video i'm sure this video was really very helpful for your usm step on examination thank you so much take care